Hello viewers, welcome back to my technology channel on YouTube GTech. In this video, I'm going to take up some superficial introduction to loudspeaker crossover networks. So let's look into some uh, theory about this subject. So I'm not going to go uh, in depth, but still I will try to uh, put some superficial concepts which everybody can understand with the help of high school physics. So let's start. Let us look into some uh, fundamental aspects like why such a crossover network is required in a loudspeaker system. And also let us look into uh, some fundamentals like how a crossover network works, how the components in a crossover network behaves and certain other aspects uh, related to this. So to start with, let us take the first question. Why a crossover network is required in a loudspeaker system? A loudspeaker converts electrical signals into sound output. So input is audio encoded as electrical signals and output is sound that we hear. So audio consists of a set of or a range of frequencies or range of signals or with different frequencies ranging from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. So now uh, if we consider a loudspeaker uh, it's very difficult to manufacture a single unit that can perform very well uh, producing output for all the inputs ranging from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. So it cannot perform in an optimum manner to produce the output. For example, it might be performing well with a certain band of frequencies, but it may not be performing well uh, with certain other band of frequencies. So it's very tough to manufacture a single uh, speaker driver that can work with the whole band of frequencies that is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. For that reason, what they do is they manufacture specialized drivers that can work optimum at a particular band of frequencies. For example, let us say, or let us take an woofer. An woofer is manufactured to perform best at low frequencies. If we take a tweeter, that can perform very well at higher frequencies. A mid bass can perform uh, very well at mid band frequencies. So in that way, if we build a speaker system with multiple speakers specializing uh, in, in, in specific frequencies, then probably we can build a better speaker system. So that is the fundamental idea. So when we are trying to uh, build such a system, when we are trying to build such a system, so we need to differentiate the frequencies uh, uh, probably uh, we need to differentiate or separate the frequencies that we are supplying to each of those speakers is it not so for that purpose we need a special circuitry so which can uh, separate uh, for example lower frequencies mid band frequencies high frequencies or if we have uh, more specialized speakers so the band of frequencies that that particular uh, speaker driver specializes in. So we need to separate like that. So we need to have a special filter circuitry which does this job. So it takes the whole input, the complete band of frequencies as input, then separates the uh, frequencies into bands and feeds it to uh, that particular specialized speaker, so speaker driver. So that is the fundamental reason why we require a crossover network. So now let us look into how a crossover network works in a loudspeaker system. A crossover network employs a simple circuit called as a LC circuit for its working. So an LC circuit consists of basically two components. So the first component is called as an inductor and it is represented by this symbol so inductor and a second component called as a capacitor 
okay so before before uh, looking into like how these two components work so let us look into uh, one other very simple aspect of uh, an audio uh, signal audio encoded as electrical uh, signal so an audio signal um, consists of ac components so ac stands for alternating current so by this what i mean is an ac component is a wave okay in which its amplitude varies with time see this was the amplitude here this was the amplitude here this was the amplitude so its amplitude is either increasing or decreasing with time so it's continuously changing so that is what we refer to as an ac component so why i need to tell you this because electronic components behave different with something called as a dc current okay and it behaves very different with something called as ac current okay so if your signals are made up of dc components so it behaves in a completely different way and if it is made up of ac components it works it behaves in a completely different way so these inductors and capacitors actually behave very differently when it encounters a ac signal so a, a, a signal with ac components so uh, that is the uh, basic reason why i told you about this so now uh when we are dealing with sound sound signals obviously we are dealing with ac components uh, uh, uh a signal with ac components that is one thing second thing is a sound wave uh, usually uh, that we hear or something it's made up of thousands of frequencies simultaneously uh traveling uh, for example if it is inputting to uh some circuit so uh, you you can assume that um thousands of waves simultaneously entering the unit and each wave uh, probably is made up is of a different frequency okay so likewise it's a band of frequencies that is simultaneously entering a particular unit okay for or something to happen whatever whatever we uh, might have uh, uh, desired for so first point is it's an ac component uh, it, it it consists of ac components second thing is it consists of a uh, uh, humongous number of waves simultaneously entering so now an inductor is a component that offers resistance to it offers resistance to ac components an inductor is a component that offers resistance to ac components in a signal so that resistance is actually not called as resistance but it is referred to as impedance it is referred to as impedance so the resistance offered to ac components by an inductor or a capacitor is referred to as impedance so that's the speciality of an inductor so contrary to that a capacitor if you take it offers uh what do you call uh, a capacitor allows ac components and blocks dc components or it you know, resists dc components and allows ac components so it works opposite to um uh, an inductor so we can say that so uh, an inductor offers high impedance to ac components and a capacitor offers uh, low impedance to ac components so now using combination of 
these two, we can uh, what do you call uh, design circuits using which we can filter out uh, certain AC components and we can let in certain AC components, uh, etc. So now let us try to better understand how an inductor works. So here is an inductor. So let's input an audio signal to it, to one of the leads. So an audio signal consists of frequencies ranging from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, is it not? So when we input this signal, so depending on the strength of this inductor, so the strength of an inductor is measured in Henry's. So Henry's, milli Henry's, micro Henry's, like that. So depending on its strength, it offers resistance to AC components that is coming in from the input. In the sense, it might offer higher resistance to certain band of frequencies like uh, 10 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, like that. So it can, it may offer say much uh, lesser resistance to a signal with lower frequencies like 1 kilohertz, much much lower to uh, a signal like uh, an incoming signal like uh, with, with a frequency 100 hertz like that. So its impedance varies with frequency. Impedance in the sense that the resistance of itself is impedance. So any resistance to AC components is referred to as impedance. So it offers varying impedance for different frequencies. So that is how an inductor works. So now let us take up a capacitor. So a capacitor works contrary to an inductor in the sense, let us say we feed, so here is the symbol of a capacitor. So let us say we feed this with an audio signal. So again, an audio signal consisting of frequencies between 20 hertz and 20 kilo hertz. So now what this capacitor is going to do is it offers impedance to lower frequencies okay and it lets in higher frequencies to go through it. So what does that mean? So depending on the capacity of this capacitor which is measured in farads or uh, uh, basically farads is a very big value so it's measured in microfarad, nanofarad, picofarad etc. Uh, so millifarad itself is very big farad is too very big. So depending on its capacity, so it's going to resist low frequency uh, signals. In the sense, a particular capacitor might offer, uh, uh, let us say, uh, might offer um, resistance, higher resistance to frequencies of say, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz, or say 1 kilohertz, etc. Once again, the impedance varies and it might offer lesser resistance to frequencies, higher frequencies like say 5 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, like that. So, its impedance or the resistive uh, capacity to hertz or AC components varies with frequencies again so it works exactly opposite to an inductor when fed with a signal with uh, AC and DC components. So now the best part is if we can use a combination of L and C that is an inductor and a capacitor. So if, you, if we use a combination of an inductor and a capacitor we can build uh, uh, very efficient filter systems. So that's what uh, we are going to do with, uh, we are going to do while building speaker crossover networks. We are going to use inductors and capacitors and build the filters 
uh, and uh, create specific bands to feed to specific uh, speaker drivers. So now let us start with an actual uh, crossover network consisting of inductors and capacitors. So before that, uh, let us understand that any crossover network is made up of filter circuits that can filter out different band of frequencies, is it not? So now, when we have a three-way crossover network, so we need to send low frequencies to a specialized unit called as UFO. Then we need to send mid-band frequencies to uh, a unit called mid-bus and higher frequencies to a unit called tweeter. Is it not? So, the analog is, the frequencies that we are letting in here to the woofer are low frequencies. So, that is the reason why this circuit is called as a low pass filter. Okay? So, when it comes to the mid bars, so what we are doing is, we are uh, letting through a portion of the band of frequencies between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Maybe we are uh, letting in something between 1000 hertz to 5000 hertz. So, for that reason, this filter circuit is referred to as a band pass filter. So coming to the last one, to the uh, tweeter. So we are letting in only high frequencies. So for that reason, uh, this filter circuit is referred to as what? High pass. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, fundamental of a filter circuit. So we need to know one other thing uh, referred to as an order of a filter. For example, all these three filters that you are seeing, they are referred to as first order filters. In the sense, a filter consisting of a single level of filtration is referred to as a first order filter. So if it consists of two levels of filtration, it is referred to as a second order three levels, third order, fourth level, uh, four levels, fourth order, so on and so forth. So it is uh, also assumed that a uh, filter with uh, higher order performs better, it filters better. So that works till a certain extent. And also uh, a filter with a lower order uh, has some advantages and disadvantages, a filter with higher order has some other advantages and some other disadvantages. So let us look into uh, the differences between the orders a bit later. So right now, let us look into how a first order filter works. So let us look into this low pass filter now. So this low pass filter is connected to a woofer. So this is referred to as a first order filter because it has only one level of filtration that is we have only one inductor here so I used an app to generate uh, the value of this uh, what do you call inductor so let us see that we put a uh, inductor with a value 1.27 milli Henry okay so if we choose an inductor with a value of 1.27 millihenries, what this low pass filter is going to do is, so one other thing uh, that I have, uh, what do you call, inputted by generating this uh, value is, I've taken the impedance of my loudspeaker, that is, which is the load at 8 ohms, okay. So based on this 8 ohms, this is generated. So 1.27 millihenries. So what it is going to do is, so this is going to let through, it is going to let through all frequencies from 20 hertz to 1 
kilohertz. So it is going to let in. Okay. So right. Then it's going to start blocking all the frequencies above one kilohertz, above one thousand hertz. So it's going to block block all frequencies greater than one kilohertz. So that's what this filter, this low pass filter with this value of inductor is going to do. That is it is offering high resistance to or high impedance to all the frequencies above one kilohertz. So that is how this low pass works. So now let's take this high pass filter. So here if I put a capacitor of 2.48 microfarad okay so this value I generated through an app again. So assuming that this is an 8 ohms tweeter, impedance of this tweeter is 8 ohms so I generated this. So if I put this what this filter circuit is going to do is it's going to block all the frequencies less than 5 kilohertz 5 kilohertz that is all the frequencies less than 5000 hertz is going to block and it is going to let let through all the frequencies greater than 5 kilohertz. So that's how this high pass frequency, uh, high pass filter is going to behave with this value. So it's offering uh, high impedance to frequencies below 5000 hertz and it is offering less impedance to frequencies above 5 kilohertz. So now let us take this band pass. So I took it deliberately I, uh, I took it in the end because it has the combination of these two components. So now here for us we need to let through only frequencies between say 1000 hertz to 5000 hertz. So this band we have to let through this filter. So for this we have chosen an LC circuit in series and obviously this is an 8 ohms uh, mid bass driver that I have selected. So now uh, okay, I will take up uh, so the value of inductors 0 0.14 or 0. 14 0 0.14 and 22.41 4 1 so I've used an app to generate this these values it can be generated uh, with the help of the formula also so formulas are also available so now very simple so between 20, uh, signal between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz is coming in. So what this inductor is going to do is, it's going to offer resistance to uh, higher frequencies. So depending on its strength. So in this particular circuit, it's going to let through very very important it's going to this inductor is going to let through all frequencies it's going to let through all frequencies below 5 kilohertz this inductor is going to let through all frequencies below 5 kilohertz and this enters here this capacitor what it is going to do is it's going to block all the frequencies below block all 
frequency is below 1000 hertz so let through all frequencies below 5 kilohertz this capacitor blocks all frequencies below 1000 hertz in this way after the combination at the speaker driver we have signals ranging between 1000 hertz and 5000 hertz so that's why this is called as a band pass filter so that is how low pass band pass and high pass filter works when we use an lc circuit so now here are some second order filters so here is the woofer here is the mid pass here is the tweeter so low pass band pass high pass so as you can see here i have also put the values of the components so which were generated by an app for an 8 ohms load or an 8 ohms uh, uh, speaker speaker driver so as you can see here i have two components so very very easy to understand just follow it for a minute you can understand it so what we know is an inductor blocks what ac components so which means it lets in low frequencies so let us say with this setup so we are letting in all the frequencies below 1000 hertz so this inductor is letting in all the frequencies below 1000 so letting in letting in below 1000 hertz now because it is impossible to uh, generate a perfect slope in the sense you cannot exactly block the frequencies uh, letting through at 1 kilohertz there is a spillover this side that side so for that reason we are going to add one more component so here we are adding a capacitor so what this capacitor is going to do is it's going to bypass so this is the ground point so this capacitor is going to bypass any other uh, signal above 1000 hertz which has sneaked in to ground so above 1000 hertz 1000 hertz is bypassed to ground so which means now uh, the output of this filter entering the loudspeaker is much more refined in the sense it's much more precise so you have done a better slicing at 1 kilohertz so that's why a second order filter is much more accurate than a first order filter so it makes the output more precise so exactly same thing opposite to LP a high pass filter works so here this capacitor so what it's going to do is it lets in obviously we know AC components so it's going to let in uh, or, or as per our uh, circuit it's going to let in all the frequencies above 5 kilohertz so it's going to let in so it's going to let in frequencies above 5 kilohertz so what happens is some frequencies below 5 kilohertz also sneak in in first order filter so if you have only one component some 
signals below 5 kilohertz also sneak in. It gets through. So when that happens, this inductor, what it does is it bypasses those signals below 5 kilohertz to ground. Bypass. Bypasses uh, signals less than 5 kilohertz. So in this way, we get a much more refined filter signal at the output. So much precise slopes in the, so uh, if I actually represent that in a graph, so and uh, divide the this thing, so imagine, uh, uh, okay, let me put it like this. So, if you can see here, so this is the first filter, low pass, band pass, high pass. So, in a first order filter, let us say, it is working like this, it's separating the frequencies at this point. So, actually ideal would have been like this, ideal would have been like this. ideal case would have been like this exactly perfect so that will not happen rather there is a spillover like this band pass spills into low pass and also high pass low pass spills into band pass high pass spills into band pass like this so by putting more and more levels of filtration we can actually reduce this so instead of uh, spilling so much we can make it le less spilling like this okay so that is the idea behind having more filter levels so higher the order so better we can make the slope so similarly as you can see here the band pass with two levels of filtration would be doing a much more precise job so now we know that we can build a first order filter, a second order filter, third order, fourth order, so on and so forth. So depending on our uh, requirement and depending on our, uh, what do you call it, taste, etc. So now we also need to learn one other very important aspect when we build these uh, filters in different orders. So that important aspect is called as phase shift so a phase is a very important property of an ac signal so if i take up the topic and uh, try to explain it's going to take a very long time so i assume that most of you uh, know about that because uh, it's it, it's in your high school physics so uh, an ac signal has a property called as phase. So, a filter circuit imparts phase shift to the incoming signal. So, as you can see here, I have put the phase shifts induced by filters of various orders. So, in a first order filter, it induces a phase shift of 90 degrees between low and high. A second order filter induces a phase shift of 180 degrees. A third order filter induces a phase shift of 270 degrees. And a fourth order filter induces a phase shift of 360 degrees. Or it is said that uh, in a fourth order filter, the signal is one cycle behind because of this 360 degrees phase shift. So when this phase shift is induced what happens is at the output of the speakers the quality of sound reduces so you feel the sound a bit muddy and also the distortion is more so in order to avoid that so you need some remedies so one simple remedy is for example if you were to have a second order filter so in that case it is inducing a phase shift of 180 degrees 
so what you can do is you can reverse the terminals of the speakers uh, terminals of the tweeter so plus to minus and minus to plus so in such a case uh, it uh, the, the signals cancel each other evenly and uh, the output is uh, not that much muddy so distortion also reduces so there are also other uh, what do you call um, much more theoretically better methods of say correcting the phase shifts so a gold standard method is uh, in the design of the speaker enclosure itself so there was uh, uh, one project that had come long back in uh, leading electronics magazine so there they had something called as a uniface speaker design so the box itself looked something like this so woofer here mid pass here and tweeter here so using the design of the box itself they had corrected the phase shifts and the intention was to make all the drivers fire simultaneously in the same phase so when all the drivers fire at the same phase so the at the output the sound is in the same phase from all these and the muddy thing is completely eliminated and also distortion is almost eliminated so this is a gold standard design that you can employ while designing your loudspeaker system you can also look on the internet for other remedies uh, the simplest one is reversing the terminals so this is all about some superficial introduction to loudspeaker crossover networks so if you have uh, comments and questions you can put it in the comment section of this video so i will try to answer those so if uh, this video was interesting so click on the like button please share it among your friends also if you want to receive notifications about my future videos you can subscribe to my videos so thanks for watching thank you